What is up guys, it's James from CopLogic. Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, do make sure you like the video if you can, it really helps us out and it's free. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna stay up to date with everything going on in this January transfer window. We do of course have two fairly big stories today. The big one being Mohamed Salah is inching closer to a contract extension. We're gonna take a look at that. And I also wanna take a look at a story that popped up a couple of days ago surrounding Curtis Jones and this apparent move to Arsenal. We're gonna take a look at whether that's actually true. We're gonna get into the weeds of it, do some detective of work so let's start with the Curtis Jones story so I first seen this story maybe two days ago I thought what a load of rubbish and then it popped up again and a couple of channels and media outlets I've seen have started covering it so I thought I'd take a proper look at what this story is where it came from and what the details are so here we go so far every single report I've seen have all cited this coming from the same place as their source so every single report seems to direct it back to AF Camden and Arsenal ITK who says Arsenal have already made contact with Liverpool midfield the Curtis Jones ahead of a potential summer transfer. Mikel Arteta really wants to sign the players. So first of all, this is a supposed summer transfer. There's nothing that's going to happen in January. Second of all, as I said, AF Camden seems to be the only source for this story. Now, AF Camden, as far as I can tell, is simply just an Arsenal ITK account on Twitter. So really quickly, if you don't know what an ITK is, it stands for In The Know, and pretty much every football club has these accounts. They are faceless accounts that... Generally, it's where leaks come from, it's where rumors start, and it's usually people that are connected to the industry in some way. They might have connections to journalists, or they might have connections to people within a club, or they have no connections whatsoever, and you've got to try and sift through that and figure out which people are just lying for clicks and which people actually have genuine sources and bring out relevant information and leaks and that kind of thing. Now, Liverpool have a number of these, and they have a number that are actually very trustworthy and generally get a lot of things right. They also have a number that you know to avoid and just spout absolute rubbish most of the time. Every club is the same and I'm not going to pretend to understand the ITKs of Arsenal because I'm not an Arsenal fan, I've got no reason to delve into that world. So I don't know if AF Camden typically gets things right or whether he's one of those people that's full of rubbish. But what I do know is the fact that he's the only source for this story across every outlet that's covered it. They all drop back to this guy. To have only one ITK as the source for your story, it generally means it's probably a load of rubbish. It's unlikely to be true at this stage. I mean, look, if this gets picked up by more reliable outlets, then fair enough, maybe it's got some legs to it. But so far, it certainly hasn't. And if it does, of course, we'll be the first to let you know on this channel here. But let's take a look at this story assuming there is something to it first of all Curtis is scouse so is he gonna leave Liverpool you know to me it seems unlikely if you are lucky enough to ever be in that position where you get to play for your home club generally you're probably not gonna leave it's probably a dream come true and in you know in the case of like a Steven Gerrard you're just never leaving the club now I know famously Steven Gerrard nearly moved to Chelsea um, and we'll talk, I'll talk about that in a second but, but I don't think it's the same situation here for Curtis Jones at all. Now, there have been a few things floating around on Twitter that apparently Curtis Jones was an Arsenal fan in his youth and reports saying that while he was in the Liverpool Academy, he was telling anyone that would listen that he supported Arsenal. And apparently, it was only when Steven Gerrard came in to coach the under-18s that Gerrard pulled him aside and said, listen, you need to stop that. And uh, that pretty much silenced it and it's never been heard of since. So I don't know if there's something to it maybe in that he's a boyhood Arsenal fan, but he wouldn't be the first scout to play for Liverpool that as a young boy supported a different club you know a prime example is Jamie Carragher was it Everton through and through and you know you look at him now he bleeds Liverpool so even if that was to be true it's not something that really concerns me if we take the Scouse aspect out of it for a second and just look at Curtis Jones himself well right now I think he's in really good form I think he's playing the best he's ever played in a Liverpool shirt he's really stepped up this season he's one of a number of players that have really stepped it up this season actually I could probably do a separate video just on that but yeah I think Curtis Jones's performances this season have gone up a notch and you know in a season where we had a fairly uncertain midfield basically everyone left we brought a new midfield in we needed players like Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones to step up and I think Curtis Jones well I think both of them have certainly done that this season he's getting plenty of game time and Liverpool are still in all four competitions so you know there's plenty of opportunity for Curtis Jones this season to show Jurgen Klopp what Klopp I'm sure knows he's capable of but also to show the fans what he's capable of and to prove to himself that he belongs in this Liverpool side. If we go back to the Steven Gerrard thing I mentioned just a second ago where you know famously Gerrard almost went to Chelsea but ultimately he didn't and I think that's important to remember as well he didn't he was also scouse. The difference between Liverpool then and Liverpool now is that Liverpool now are capable of winning absolutely Absolutely anything. I'm talking Premier League titles. I'm talking.
talking domestic cups. I'm talking the Champions League. You know, we might not be in the Champions League this season, but you only have to look at the Premier League table to know that we belong there and we will be back there next season 100%. I have no doubts about that. So this is the kind of club where not only is Curtis getting plenty of playing time, but he also has the opportunity to win absolutely anything and absolutely everything with Liverpool Football Club under a manager as good as Jurgen Klopp, a manager that a lot of players right now would give anything to work with, a manager the stature of which most players will never get to work with in their lifetime. Curtis Jones finds himself fortunate enough to be in that situation right now. I just don't see any reason why he'd want to leave. You know, there is a difference between scouts or not leaving Liverpool and being moved on from Liverpool. I don't believe there's any reason Curtis would want to leave Liverpool. Whether he was to be moved on by Liverpool is a different matter. That would depend primarily on price because he certainly, I don't think, needs to be pushed out the door based on performance. As I said, I think he's really stepped up this season. But I think the other important thing to look at is the lack of current midfield options. Would Liverpool really take the risk of getting rid of Curtis Jones in the summer? Look, we all know if you are a team that wants to win absolutely everything, you need depth, especially in this current world of football where players are playing so many games you absolutely need depth in able to compete and I think Curtis Jones is an integral part of this Liverpool side and the depth in midfield one ITK is certainly not enough for all the noise that Arsenal fans are making expecting this thing to happen I just don't think the basis for the story is there at all I can't see it happening and if Liverpool go on and have an absolutely incredible season this season and so far everything's lining up to look that way then what reason would he ever have to leave why would he want to leave so for me yeah I'm ruling this one out. Right, let's move on to the big one, the exciting one, the one that I'm sure you probably all want to hear about. And that is a story coming from Jack Talbot via the Anfield Watch that Mohamed Salah is close to signing a contract extension. It says Mohamed Salah is inching closer to signing a new contract with Liverpool. Now, first of all, caveat, whilst this isn't Talbot's story directly, his endorsement of the Steve K article from Anfield Watch is very promising because Jack Talbot is a very trustworthy and very reliable journalist. I don't think he'd endorse this if he didn't agree with the article. It seems to me, having done research on the article, that Steve K is a colleague of Jack Talbot's or you know a fellow journalist that also works for Anfield Watch and a number of other outlets that both of them write stories for including transfer.com, for example. So yeah, I think his endorsement is promising, but let's take a look at the actual article, which can be found on Anfield Watch. And it says, the Egypt International's openness to a contract renewal has prompted a shift in Liverpool's transfer strategy. The club had been actively exploring contingency options for a replacement for Salah until recently. However, with the latest developments, Liverpool have now scaled back the search for a winger. We had that story a couple of days ago about Elise breaking. We know the club will have been looking at contingency plans for Salah. It would only make sense to do that. But I think there's a very promising news. And for me, it all lines up. And to me, honestly, it makes sense. Liverpool will be back in the Champions League next season. I'm fully confident of that. And I'm sure Mohamed Salah is very much aware of that fact. And he strikes me as the kind of player that wants to win everything. We know this about Mo Salah. We know anytime there's a record on the line, he wants to break it. We know he wants the goal records. We know he wants the golden boots every season we know he wants to win every trophy available every season Liverpool are currently in all four competitions both domestic cups we're in Europe still and we are in a title race I mean we're top of the table for Christ's sake Salah's gonna look at where Liverpool are at the end of this season and he's gonna have a big decision to make but I think it's very clear at the moment that he's gonna get a chance to Champions League football again and I think if he deems this team as one capable of winning the Champions League then that's going to be an incredibly compelling argument to stay at Liverpool. I think ultimately Salah can win more here than he can anywhere else. It doesn't matter where he goes. He's got the chance to win everything here. Another Premier League, another Champions League, any of the domestic cups, whatever it might be. I, you know, I think Salah wants to win it all and he can do that at Liverpool. Jürgen Klopp will still be at Liverpool, which I think is also a big pull for a player like Mohamed Salah. And the only real link we've seen so far for Mo Salah is those Saudi clubs, which we're in for him in the summer. Now, he's never really struck me as the type of player to go to Saudi anyway, I have to be honest. I know he'd be a Muslim symbol there, a talisman if you like, but I think honestly, his personal accolades are more important to him. He just strikes me as that kind of player. We see all the time he wants to break records. He wants golden boots. He wants every trophy under the sun. Saudi just doesn't seem right for Mohamed Salah. Maybe, maybe when he starts to slow down, it might be the kind of place he goes just for a payday before he retires. Fair play. Would not hold that against any player that went and did that. However, Salah is not past his best. The guy's got the most goals in the Premier League this season so far. He's definitely in the race for another golden boot. We're definitely in the race for a Premier League title. So 
Salah's not past his best. He's got no reason to go and make that move to Saudi just yet. And we've seen with the likes of Roberto Firmino, who already wants to come back to Europe, that the grass isn't always greener if you go there anyway. Ultimately, it would be a welcome extension, and these talks have to happen this season, so the timing lines up with this report. With Salah entering the final season of his current contract next year, talks about an extension or talks about selling the player have to happen this season. Otherwise, you risk letting him go for free the following season. So it lines up. It's what we all want. And and honestly, for me, it makes more sense for Mo Salah to extend his contract at Liverpool than it does for him to move anywhere else. So I'm really hoping that this one is true. We'll probably see more about this as the season goes on. Of course, as we ramp up towards the end of the season, things are going to get very noisy about this situation. I'm sure journalists will be asking Jürgen Klopp about it week in, week out, because ultimately we all want to know what's going to happen with the star player. But that'll pretty much do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you can. It really helps us out. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're not already because we are going to be covering this transfer window extensively just as we did back in the summer so for all your information on liverpool transfers this january make sure you sub to the channel and as always guys we will see you in the next video peace